hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to make this beautiful hat bag and um it has a very simple construction and uh this is how the bag looks like at the front and when it comes to the back side this is what it looks like it doesn't have a button there and then it has enough room to accommodate different things as you may wish to um, put in your bag. So let's get started and learn how to make this beautiful bag. Um, for this project, you will need yarn. And for the yarn, I'm using this uh, coded yarn. I would call it coded because it's not the normal thread. It's like macrame yarn. That's what I hear people uh, calling it but this is what it looks like. So if you can get yourself something like this, this would be fine. And then you also need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. That's what I used. But um, if you don't have a 3.75 and you have tight stitching, then you're going to go for a four millimeter. But if you have loose stitching, then you're going to go down to 3.5 millimeter uh, crochet hook. And then you'll need a darning needle. Then this is the chain that's going to go on the hand of the bag. And then these are the rings that are going to help us with this chain. So just have two rings and then a chain. And let's get started. And put this away. So um, to begin, we are going to create the heart shape. As you can see here, we have already created the first one and I'm going to go ahead and create the second one. So I'm going to take you through the process of making one. So you're going to start off with a slip stitch and to make a slip stitch, you're going to just do this and then you're going to fold over your yarn this tail like that so that we have that loop created there and then yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through again and then at this point you can drop this and then pull the tail and that's how I create my slip knot now you're going to make a chain of 18 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. <clears throat> so that will create a braided look on the chain. So you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook. So this is not counted as a chain. So we start counting from this one one two three and into the fourth we are going to place a total of five double crochets in there one two three four and five and the first chain three, which was the turning chain, on also counts as a stitch. So, so far we have a total of six stitches, including this first chain three. <coughs> so, um, we're going to place one double crochet into the next four stitches. So, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. That's one, two, three. And four so after that we are going to make a total of five double crochets together so that is uh, a total of five joined into one so yarn over go into the next stitch with a double crochet pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and don't finish that double crochet we're going to repeat that Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through two. Don't finish that one as well. So those are two. And then into the next, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Those are three. 
yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two those are four and yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and those are five stitches and we are going to yarn over and pull through all so you can see the five stitches have been joined into one stitch make sure that's tight enough yarn over and now we are going to go into the next four stitches four chains with one double crochet so go into the next stitch with one double crochet make sure you don't leave a very big hole behind make sure when you work the five double crochets together you try to um, make the tension tight so that we don't leave big gaps behind otherwise we are going to have holes in between there so this is one and then two we want a total of four three and then four so you will have one chain left as you can see here and we are going to place a total of six double crochets into that um, last chain so one two three four five and six all into the last chain so that will bring you to as you can see we've worked from here down and then up and now this is going to bring us to this other side of the of the heart shape the bottom side and now we are going to make one double crochet in the next six chains so prepare for a double crochet go into the next chain with one double crochet that's one we want a total of six and as i work this i am weaving in this tail so i just put it behind so that i'm working around it so that's two three four five six and after your six stitches you're going to go into the next chain with a total of five double crochets all in the same stitch so one two three four and five all in the same chain so as you can see the heart shape is already forming and uh, we are going to make one double crochet into the last six chains so go into the next chain with one double crochet until you have a total of six uh, double crochets this is three four five and six and that last uh, sixth stitch will be placed in the last chain and after this you're going to make a slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the row of the round so you're going to count one two and into the third you're going to place a slip stitch there and now you can get your scissors and cut this tail because we've already worked around it so this is what you should have right now we are done with round one so moving on to round two we are going to chain three and that counts as a double crochet go into the same exact space where you place the slip stitch so into there into that space there and place a double crochet so that means uh, this space it's like we have two stitches into it the chain three and then the double crochet 
so uh, we're going into the next five stitches with two double crochets into each and every stitch so this is the first one one and two go into the next one and two that's the second one two in the third one two in the fourth one two in the fifth one and after this you are going to go into the next two stitches placing one double crochet into each so one double crochet into the next two stitches that's one and then into the next stitch you place one double crochet like that and now we are going to do our double crochet five together stitch into the next five stitches so i hope you remember how to do that i'll take you through yarn over insert your hook into the first one yarn over pull through two don't finish it yarn over insert your hook into the second one yarn over pull through two yarn over insert your hook into the third one yarn over pull through two yarn over insert your hook into the fourth one yarn over pull through two yarn over insert your hook into the fifth one yarn over pull through two you will have a total of six loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all like that and make sure you tighten your tension at this point don't leave a long uh, loop like this make sure it's on this chain like that and then prepare for a double crochet and double crochet once into the next two stitches so this is the first one and then the second one like that now we are going to place two double crochets into the next six stitches so yarn over insert your hook that's one double crochet and then one more double crochet into the same stitch and we are going to repeat this for a total of six stitches that are going to receive a total of two stitches into each stitch so this is the third one fourth then the fifth and then this is the sixth So we're going to go into the next eight stitches with only one double crochet into each. One, two, three, four, five, six. seven and eight so after your eighth stitch <clears throat> you're going to do a total of five double crochets into the same exact stitch so into the next stitch here we're going to do a total of one two three four and five so after your five double crochets into that stitch we're going to go into the last eight stitches with um, one double crochet into each so one two three four five six seven 
and the eighth should be your last chain as you can see here so you're going to place your eighth stitch in there so we have a total of eight stitches after the five double crochets into the same stitch so after this you're going to go into on top of the first chain three of the round and you're going to make a slip stitch like that so that marks the end of round two and this is what we have so um we're going to round three you're going to chain three and then you're going to make a double crochet into that same exact chain where you place the slip stitch so after that you are going to place one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the next so this is the first time then you're going to place one double crochet and two double crochets into the next we want a total of five times so this is the second time then uh, one double crochet two double crochets into the next stitch that's the third time one double crochet into the next stitch two double crochets into the next that's the fourth time and the fifth time we're going to do that one double crochet into the next stitch and two double crochets into the next sorry so that's the fifth time and after this you're going to place one double crochet into the next stitch like that and now we're going to do our five double crochet together stitch so hope you still remember how to do that three four and five and then yarn over pull through all keeping the tension tight and then double crochet once into the next stitch and now we are going to do two double crochets in the next stitch one double crochet in the next stitch so that's the first time and we want a total of six times this time um, two one two one so we are done with the first time then this is the second time two into the next stitch one stitch into the next that's the second time two into the next one stitch into the next i'm just saying stitch because um this pattern is worked in only double crochets so this should be the the third time and we want a total of six times so two and one that's the fourth time then two and one this is the fifth time two and one this is the sixth time so um we're going to double crochet once into the next nine stitches so one two three
four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And after this, we are going to do five double crochets all in the same stitch. So into this next stitch, we are placing one, two, three, four, and five. And after that, we are going to go into the last 10 stitches with one double crochet into each. So let's see if they're 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So that's the very last stitch. And after your tenth stitch, you're going to place a slip stitch on top of the first chain three of the round. And that marks the end of round three. Now we're going to round four, which is going to be uh, we're going to round four, which is going to be the last round of the heart shape. So let's get started. You're going to chain three, just like we've been doing for the previous rounds. And then go into the same exact uh, space where you place the slip stitch and place a double crochet in there. And now we are we are going to make some more increases. So this time it's one double crochet into the next two stitches. So one into this one and one into the next and then two into the next and that's the repeat. So we want a total of five times. So far we've done one, only one time. So one into the next two, one, and then one into the next, and then two into the next. That's the second time. I hope I'm explaining it right. This is the best way I can put it out, but it's well explained in the written pattern, trust me. It's easier to follow when you're uh, reading the written pattern. So that's the second time. Then um, one into the next, one into the next, and then two into the next. So that's the third time. Then uh, one into the next, one into the next, and two into the next. That's the fourth time. We want a total of five times, so this should be uh, last one the one that we are working right now. So one into the next one into the next and then two into the next Okay So let's see what we have we are done with this corner of the heart And now we are going to do a total of five double crochets together so go into the next five stitches with double crochet double crochets but join them into one this is the fourth and then this is the fifth and then yarn over pull through all like that and then we are going to do uh, the increases on this side so We are going to start with two double crochets into the next stitch. Then one double crochet into the next two. 
one and then one so that's the first time this time we want a total of six times so we are done with our first so two into the next one into the next and one into the next so that's our second time two into the next one into the next and one into the next that's our third time we want a total of six times two into the next one into the next and one into the next that's our fourth time so i'm running out of yarn and i need to join the next channel to it so i wanted to show you how to join so we are on our fourth time don't don't forget that i'm just using a magic knot i just make a knot on this side like that and then a knot on the upper side like that and then i pull so that the knots meet And at this point, you can cut off the tails as close as you can. Like that. So we have that magic knot. It may be a bit bumpy, but it won't show. So this was our fourth time. So two into the next. One into the next. Oh my god. I make sure that the knot always goes to the back of my work. So if it if it means um making a tight tension for one of the stitches, then I will. So I have that one into the next and one into the next. So that's the fifth time. And then two into the next. and one into the next two one and one so we are done with the increases on this side as you can see now we are going to place one double crochet into the next 10 stitches so one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then um, if you see me hesitating, I'm just trying to follow the written pattern that I already wrote down. I'm just following the same exact steps. So that's why sometimes I hesitate and try to refer to the written pattern. So after this, you're going to go into the next stitch with a total of five double crochets. So this is one, two, three, four and five and then you're going to place one double crochet in each of the last 12 stitches so you should be having a total of 12 stitches left one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so let's do that one double crochet into each one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 
and 12. So we have our 12 stitches and that marks the end of our round four. And you're going to go on top of the first chain, chain three of the round and make a slip stitch. Like that. And then you're going to chain one and leave a tail behind. I'll leave a tail that's long enough. We may need it later on. Then pull through and tighten that part. This yarn is a little bit rough on the hand, so you have to be a little bit careful. It could cut you. So um, this is what our hat looks like. Very perfect. And um, since I have already done my second hat, you guys are going to go ahead and make your second hat the same exact way that I have explained the first part so that you have two identical hats like this and then I'll meet you back to show you how to form this into a bag all right so after making your two hats you're going to put them aside and now we're going to create that room for the bag to be functional um, we are going to create a, a body on the side of the bag so that our bag can have room to accommodate different uh, objects like a phone, like whatever you need to put in your bag. So let's begin. You're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot using the same exact hook. And we are going to make a chain of 10. seven eight nine and ten this chain can vary according to um, the thickness that you want for your bag but I did a total of ten then you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and place a single crochet and continue to single crochet all the way along the chain Placing one single crochet into each and every chain. So at the end of your row one, you should be having a total of nine single crochets. So we're going to row two, chain one, turn your work, one single crochet into each and every stitch for a total of nine single crochets. So I have my nine single crochets. We're going to row three, chain one, turn, one single crochet into each and every stitch for a total of nine single crochets or whatever number of stitches that you had for your first row. So we're going to repeat that. I'm going to show you how to determine the number of rows to work for your, for your bag. But since uh, if you're making the same exact as mine, you're going to continue until you have a total of 55 rows. So I'm going to just show you how I came up with the 55 uh, rows. Let me just finish here. So just keep repeating and building this strip. So I have my total of 55 rows at this point and I wanted to show you how I came up with my 55. Um, this is my hat and let me place a stitch marker into the exact middle up there into the five double crochet together stitch 
like that so i counted one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and into the tenth stitch just a stitch marker and then i counted 10 stitches to this side as well one two three four five six seven eight nine and into the tenth plus a stitch marker there so you'll have a total of three stitch markers and these are going to help us uh, have a balanced bag especially when we attach this so i counted the number of stitches from from this stitch marker so from this one that has the stitch marker 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 the stitch with the slip stitch is counted as a stitch so 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 and the stitch with the stitch marker makes the 55th stitch so that's how i came up with the 55 rows to work on the on this strip so what this strip is going to do is um it's going to attach onto this like this still maintaining the heart shape but creating room for the bag as you can see here so let's get back to our strip and we see what to do after our 55 rows so when you have your 55 rows for this uh, strip you are going to go into each and every stitch on the side we want to create uh, single crochet stitches we don't want these bumps here so you're going to go into each and every row with one single crochet so we start with this one one make sure I don't miss any two three four five six seven eight so I'm just going to go across until I have a total of 55 stitches So I have made my 55, 55 stitches across here and now now after your 55 uh, single crochets across this side remember we haven't yet worked the downer side we're going to start attaching onto one of the hearts so you're going to chain one and turn your work to this other side like this now you're going to get your heart and we're going to start attaching ok 
Okay, this is my 10th stitch. So we're going to start attaching along here until we get to this uh, stitch marker. The way to do that, I wanted to use a method. I'm going to go into the back bump of this first single crochet. Then into this one. And then yarn over pull through. It's a little bit hard, but we shall learn how to do it. Pull through all. So let's begin into the back bump of this and then into the one that's closest to the strip yarn over and pull through all so the working yarn is literally at the base of the you can see it here it's down here so once you insert your hook and insert it onto this side as well you just yarn over and then pull through all so this is going to create a very neat finish when it comes to um, the the joining of the bag as you can see here so let's continue go into this one and into the next it's going to create a very beautiful braid along the joining of the bag Sorry. So this is what we have. And I think this is much better than uh, using a darning needle or um, using a, a single crochet around. So I'm going to go all the way around until I get to this stitch marker. So when you're almost coming to the end, you're going to make sure you have the same number of stitches left. So I have two here and I have this one and the one with the stitch marker. So that means I've aligned my stitches well. You can remove this stitch marker and go into the last two stitches. Then into the last one. Okay, so after this, you are going to chain one and pull tight. And this is what we have right now. So we're going to go ahead and attach our second hat. You can see the bag now has 
room for uh, accommodating objects. I don't know if I had to block the hut, but I hope it stretches out eventually. So this is what we have. And now we are, sorry, oh my God. Sorry, I had poured my stitch markers all over the place. So, um, the next thing that we're going to do is to create the single crochet row across this side of the strip. Remember, we hadn't. So, um, we're just going to go into each and every row, placing one single crochet into each, each row. Okay. Just like we did on the other side, so we're just repeating the same exact process. So after working your single crochet row across the top, we are going to start attaching our second hat onto this gap. But we have to still mark the stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Put your stitch marker there. So we've marked those two ends of the exact middle and you're going to place your work like this making sure that the right side of the hat you can see this is the wrong side and this is the right side where the stitches are more prominent um, you're going to place your work like this and we're going to start from this side where our yarn is you're going to chain one and you are going to go into that stitch with a stitch marker sorry make sure that your yarn is down below your project so go into this One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go into this one and into the first here and make a slip stitch. Pull through all. The first one may be a little bit hard, but as we go along, things will become a little bit easier. So go into the second stitch, make a slip stitch. Okay, now everything is a bit easier. So you're going to continue to join until you get to this point.
So this is what we have and you can see how the edges are forming out very beautifully. You can see that, that edge, so beautiful, so neat. And then we are doing the same exact thing on this side. And what we are doing right now is creating room for our stuff to be put in the bag. So I wanted to point out something. When you come to the tip of the bottom of the hat, just continue to place one stitch into the corresponding stitch. We are not doing any increases at this point. Just continue to join. Okay, so we are almost coming to the end. We have three stitches left. And we're joining our very last stitch. 
it now I'm going to just chain one and I show you what we have right now so this is what we have unfortunately our bag can't stand because the tip is at the base of the bag so um, you can now remove these stitch markers and this is what we have created i'm going to try and put my phone in here and you can see it can fit comfortably well and now we are going to get rid of all the loose ends we are going to weave in all our ends using a darning needle Make sure you stretch out your work so that we can get the shape perfectly well. So now, after you chain one, you leave a strand and then cut your yarn, pull through, do the same thing on this side. Yeah, after you chain one. Cut your yarn, pull through, and now you're going to get your darning needle and weave in all your ends, but make sure you're weaving them in on the wrong side of the work. I'm going to make sure I weave in all these ends on the wrong side of the work so that we don't have that shabby look on the right side. You can even just tie, if you have two strands, together uh, in the same spot you can just make a tight knot or you can even burn because um, this yarn is it it melts a bit so if you can burn let me get a lighter so after weaving in all your ends you should have something that looks like this and now you're going to introduce your two rings and we are just going to eyeball the middle stitch on this side of the strip just put it somewhere around there like that and then do the same thing on this side should have two rings okay so we have these two rings attached to um, the middle section of the strip and now uh, you're going to get the chain that you want for your for your bag for this i don't know whether to use a plain chain or something with some leather but i think i'll use this so just get any chain that you have available and put it through the ring as well so this is a little bit hard for me okay and then you're going to roll the ring until the chain is secure and then do the same thing on this side so I'm using a pair of scissors because this can easily break my nails it's a little bit hard
so this is what we have and the next thing is to find a, a lock for our bag because I don't think this will be very pleasant to look at when the bag is just open like this I'm going to just make a, something to lock with So to lock I decided to have a button as you can see here I'm going to place it <coughs> at the top of row round two that's where I'm going to place it so I'm going to get my darning needle I thread it and then I go on this side Okay, this may be a little bit big. The dining needle may be a little bit big. But I'm going to just put it through. <coughs> I don't think it will go through the button, so... I have to find a way of passing it through that hole. Like that. And then grab this like that and then I'll pass it through this other side of the row and then after this I am going to just make a knot on the inside make a double knot to secure the button Make sure you've placed it where you want it exactly to be. There. So I've made I've made my double knot. Now I'm going to get I'm going to cut this. Hope you're seeing what I'm doing. I'm going to cut, but not so close to the knot. And then I'm going to burn those tips and attach them so that they don't unravel and that's it we have attached our button onto the bag now you're going to get your 3.75 the hook that you are using for the body of the top <coughs> make a slip knot and we are going to create a chain that comes and locks onto this um, button. So what I want to do is the exact middle stitch is this one. So I'll go into this one, the one right beside it, and then make a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you're going to make a chain that's long enough to wrap around this. So I think I'm going to make a chain of 30. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Let's see what that has created because this chain has to go around that button and come back to this side as you can see. So that's what I intend to do. So 30 is okay and after my chain of 30 <coughs> I'm going to skip the middle stitch and then slip stitch into the one beside it on the opposite side. So chain one Cut your yarn, pull through, and you're going to turn your work to this side and make a knot of those two ends, the beginning end and the ending end. Make a knot like that. And then you're going to cut 
not so close to the knot because we need to burn we have to burn that end so get your lighter so this is what we have right now we have created that loop that's going to help us with the locking of the bag so all you have to do is put it through to this side of the bag alternatively you can make a knot you can make a knot here so that um, let me see around here so that when you lock um, it doesn't easily come out so one two three four five six seven eight I think I'll have a knot here what I'm going to do is to just pass it through pass uh, a strand through these two stitches like that and then make a knot at the back of the chain like this then you're going to cut not so close to the knot and now we are going to burn those ends So that's what we have and now when you're um, locking onto your button you'll have some tension to pass the button through that means it won't just come out at any time so this is what we have right now and at this point your bug is ready and it's functional I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and I will see you in my next video. Bye.